Together, the two lungs occupy two-thirds or more of the thoracic cavity. Each lung is an approximately conical structure with a narrow apex superiorly and a broad base on the inferior aspect. Let's now consider the surfaces and the borders of the lung. The broad base is in fact a concave surface and it's concave because it is indented from below by the corresponding dome of the diaphragm. So between the apex and the base of the lung, the lung displays two surfaces. An outer surface, which is sort of convex uniformly, and that is referred to as the sternocostal surface, because it's related to the inner aspect of the sternum and to the inner surfaces of the ribs of that side. The other surface is the medial surface, which frequently is also called the mediastinal surface because it forms the boundary of the mediastinum. These two surfaces are separated from each other by an anterior border of the lung and a posterior border of the lung. And these two borders are very different in appearance. The posterior border is a rounded border and it sits in the paravertebral gutter of the thoracic region. The anterior border, by contrast, is a fairly acute or pinched or sharp border. And that's how if I gave you two lungs without telling you which side was which, you would be able at a glance to tell me whether it was a right lung or a left lung. There is another striking difference between the lungs of the two sides. The right lung typically has three lobes. The left lung, by contrast, has just two lobes. The right lung has an upper lobe, a middle lobe and a lower lobe. There is a very deep, obliquely placed fissure, a full thickness fissure even, which separates the upper and middle lobes on the one hand from the lower lobe. And there is another fissure, a smaller fissure, but very deep nevertheless, a transverse fissure which separates the middle lobe from the upper lobe. On occasion, even the right lung may have just two lobes. This happens in about 8 to 10% of individuals. Now let's have a look at the left lung. There is a deep, obliquely placed fissure which divides the left lung into two lobes, an upper lobe and a lower lobe. Each lung is contained within a fairly delicate double-layered protective sac and this is the pleural sac. The two layers of the pleural sac are actually continuous with each other around the hilum of the lung. The inner layer of the pleural sac is called the visceral layer and it lines the surface of the lung and much more. It enters all the crevices in the lung and lines all the crevices too. It never leaves the lung. The outer layer of the pleural sac is called the parietal layer and it is attached to the inner surface of the chest wall and medially it is related to the fibrous pericardium. Between the visceral layer of the pleura and the parietal layer of the pleura is a space and this is the pleural space or the pleural cavity. Normally it contains nothing more than a film of fluid and that film of fluid is there just as a lubricant to allow the visceral surface of the pleura to glide against the parietal layer. However, in abnormal situations, things can enter the pleural cavity. For example, air can be trapped in the pleural cavity. This condition is called pneumothorax. And a large pneumothorax is a serious condition because it compresses the underlying lung and prevents the lung from being inflated. The medial surface of the lung is characterized by the presence of a large area called the hilum, large and busy area. There are important differences between the hilum of the right lung and the hilum of the left lung. I usually start with the left lung because it is a simpler hilum to explain. Four large tubes are seen in the hilum of the left lung. The most posterior structure of the large structures in the hilum of the left lung is the left main bronchus. So there's only one tube entering the lung that actually has cartilage in it. 
and that has got to be the bronchus. Above the left main bronchus and somewhat in front is the left pulmonary artery. In front of the left main bronchus is the left upper pulmonary vein and directly below the left main bronchus is the left lower pulmonary vein. So that's the four major structures that occupy the hilum of the left lung. There are frequently lymph nodes to be found in the hilum of the lung too. There are two important nerves that relate to the hilum of the lung on each side. And these two nerves are the phrenic nerve and the vagus nerve. One of these nerves runs immediately in front of the hilum of the lung and one behind the hilum of the lung. The nerve that runs in front of the hilum of the lung is the phrenic nerve. And the one that runs behind the hilum is the vagus. The hilum of the right lung shows some striking differences when compared with the left hilum. You can see the right main bronchus very posteriorly situated, but superiorly you can see yet another large tube with cartilage. That is the branch of the right main bronchus to the upper lobe. And the reason why you're able to see two bronchial lumina in the right hilum, whereas just one on the left side, is because the right main bronchus gives off its upper lobe bronchus rather prematurely. So you have two bronchial lumina in the right hilum. And every time the bronchial tree divides, the pulmonary arterial tree divides with it. So you see two pulmonary arterial lumina. The one that is in front of the right main bronchus is the right main pulmonary artery. And the other lumen that you can see is that of the pulmonary arteries branch to the upper lobe. There are only two pulmonary veins that emerge from the right hilum an upper pulmonary vein and a lower pulmonary vein. In addition, as on the left side, you have the right phrenic and vagus nerves related to the hilum of the right lung. The nerve that runs in front of the hilum is the phrenic nerve. And the one that runs behind the hilum of the lung on its way to the esophagus is the vagus. Your anatomy matters.